strong grip of what's going on in uh, New York, Korea, outside of it. I, I assume also you invest outside of New York. So what, what, do, you, what do you use as channels? Yes, I mean, that's certainly helped, and uh, you know, a lot of our speakers are from the West Coast, um, and um, you know, every time we have a speaker, they become part of the network, and then they can refer us to friends and all the things. We also have the fundamental advantage of being, you know, follow-on money to you guys, right? So we Series A, uh, so you know, you've done the really hard work of identifying companies, or, or you, or YC, or you know, so. It's not that hard to for us to start look at the lists and figure out the ones we would be interested in. And yeah, also the reality is that this again it's not that many people that are truly interested in deep tech. So somehow entrepreneurs tend to find their way to uh, us. Yeah. So in the, in the range of different problems we talked about, um, deal flow hasn't really been one. What what's really really hard is to. Uh, just like analyze the opportunity, uh, get the, time, the market timing right, like find the right teams, find the right uh, you know company that's not a project but an actual sort of market driven thing. Mm -hmm. That's super hard. Uh, the top of the funnel, at least for us again, because we have the benefit of being Series A as opposed to we do a little bit of C, but you know mostly A. Um, that hasn't been really a problem. Okay. We're gonna take one final quick question. Is this yes? And uh, then we'll wrap up. Hello, uh, thank you for the great discussion. Just a quick question about if your perspective on the future of the valuations and if there is, you think there is a bubble mm -hmm. in the tech investment market? Bubble in tech or in deep tech? Well, I'll, I'll which, take the risk. Which, which category is maybe in your, in your case? Since we're talking about positive tech here, yeah. um, do you see some bubbles somewhere? Since I'm like very early, um, I'm set up in the place where it's even before investment, and it's a lot of people kind of figuring out what their equity split is going to be and what they envision a patient fundraising at. And there's definitely some people that I see that their expectations are uh, out of date by two years or so, um, that people feel like they've been caught up in a uh, hype cycle. I would say that um, some of the risk has uh, occurred a lot in kind of augmented reality, there's been like a lot of hype in that and it's been deflating a bit, and, but there's still some early stage teams are like, hey, I have the next billion dollar idea. Yeah. And it's just like, well, okay, you might, but what are you gonna be like in the next two years? What's the next six months? Like, so, how are you worth that? You're uh, saying that the market actually has adjusted over the expectations, but some founders might have to not yet. I would say at the early stage, there's some number of founders who have yet to adjust their expectations. Um, I would say for many of the quote unquote good investors, or at least the blue chip ones that are like at fund, you know, three, four, five, they've already seen these sort of waves and they've kind of avoided these uh, leaps. Um, but I think there's definitely been like uh, earlier groups that are like, you know, only two years, three years in that they've had a few hiccups and being a bit, a bit overexcited. So <coughs> today, not that much of a bubble in fact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, there's obviously a lot of capital sloshing around. I, I don't know what the future holds. I, there was a line I heard recently, which I thought was a good one, which is that better to pay a uh, fair price for a great company than a great price for a fair company. Um, and I think I mean, at the end of the day, we have to you know, make investments and put capital to work. So you know, in a, if things are heated, it's best to pull back a, a bit, but we still need to you know, make, make investments. Um, I think to me, like, the bigger concerns are speed of decision making, and are we able to, you know, do kind of the um, conference of diligence that we'd like, like to do before having to make a decision on a, you know, a, one of those great opportunities. And then secondly, are companies taking on uh, too much money, um, which has, I think, all sorts of negative consequences uh, for them. So those are the ones that I kind of worry about more so than um, the valuation at right there only. Sorry, I agree with all of this, but like maybe taking a step back uh, and talking about the, the broader market. Like, so if you had asked me uh, two years ago, I would have said, yeah, for sure, this is a bubble, and it's crazy. Like, how much higher can it go? Um, and like, in some ways, like, it's still, like, it's just keep, like, the valuation at C and A, and let's just keep going up. Um, but then, you know, the, I think the, on the, on the other end, so like, I, you know, I mean, this, it's going to be ups and downs, right? Uh, you know, Mega recession at some point, all the things. But like, but long long term, the, the fundamental 
good news of the last five years is that all those companies have become much larger than we ever thought they were going to be, right? And it's not just Facebook and Twitter. It's like you know, all those, you know, even SaaS companies. And there's a few yeah. Yes. A few years back, it was just a handful. Yeah. But, they, but they've become, so Unicorn is a, is a, you know, it's a financing phenomenon. Uh, but just when we, across the, the company that we work with, and across companies, so many that have just really fast growing revenues, right? They just, and, and, and what I'm saying, the, what I'm bringing with all of this is that the, the, the market is just really large for tech. So, you know, it's like the, that has now become a cliche of the software, it's the world. That's probably true of like deep tech, it's the world, hardware, it's the world, like technology, it's the world. Um, but like all those companies, like, you know, like, a, like a Slack and all the things that, the, 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 the rate of growth as tech becomes this, it goes from this insular thing, which is, you know, as recently as 10 or 15 years ago. When I, I was in New York, I had a company that was acquired by Oracle, I remember telling people, like, you know, 12 years ago, I worked at, at Oracle, and people were like, looking at me like, such a loser. Um, <laughs> And, and, and now, like the, all the people that I talk to, like everyone's interested in tech. Like whether you're in like fashion or finance or education, like everything is tech, right? And that's, and 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 therefore the market for all the technologies that you guys build that that we back is just gigantic. So you know, are we in a bubble? Like I'm I'm actually less sure now than I was uh, two years ago. I don't think it's the end of the 90s at all. It's a transformation of every sector now. Yes. So, you know, will the tech markets uh, go down, valuations go down? I think I think it's, it becomes a macro point. Like, if the broader market goes down, then tech will go down as part of it. Will tech independently crash? I, I don't believe that. Oh, I'd like to end on this positive note. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.